Let's talk about Devin Haney for a minute. Devin Haney, who has been off uh, since that loss to Ryan Garcia back in April. That loss was later overturned to a no contest after Ryan tested positive for uh, a banned substance. Uh, it was initially believed, Lance, that Devin Haney was going to take the rest of 2024 off, come back sometime in 2025. This week, we had some social media activity from Devin Haney. Devin coming out and saying, you know what? I think it's time for me to make a return. Y'all said Turkey Alashik uh, subtweeting him, saying we're ready whenever you are in Riyadh season. Of course, there right now are two more cards scheduled before the end of the year in Riyadh in October. You've got the card headlined by Dmitry Bivol and Arthur Betterbiev. In December, you get the rematch between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. So you have some high-profile events in Riyadh for Devin Haney uh, to come back on. The question is, against whom? And... Uh, look, I think it's pretty clear Devin Haney is done at 140. He vacated his title. He's not going to stay there and and compete at that weight class. 147 is the next step up. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure who you match him up with in his first fight back. I think certainly you want to look for a lesser puncher. You know, Devin just took a pretty good beating in that fight against Ryan Garcia. You want him to bounce back against a low-level puncher. Um, what do you make of Devin Haney saying he's ready to return and... Uh, is there a logical opponent for him to come back against? Look, I think that it's it's great news that he's talking about coming back. Um, I think we're all happy to see Devin. I think what's going to drive the interest in his next fight is the curiosity factor of was he actually destroyed by uh, Ryan Garcia or is he the same old Devin Haney that we saw stand as undisputed champion as a lightweight and a champion at a 140 pounds who was just so talented and so gifted. So... Uh, at more than the opponent, more than who he fights, I think that's going to be what all the interest in, uh, about Devin Haney is. Now, having said that, I agree with you. Look, he can't he can't jump in there. It does not uh, behoove him to get in there against a, a devastating puncher. So maybe someone like Golden Boys, Alexis Rocha, right? Someone like that, a welterweight. Um, maybe I can't imagine him going in there against the new champion who was just crowned this week, Brian Norman Jr. He's got a no. Head. That's a bad idea. Yeah, he's a hell of a puncher, idea. man. This kid's good. He's not good. the not that Devin can't beat him down the line, but that's a bad idea. You know, Brian yeah. Norman, you know, just beat the bejesus out of Giovanni Santillan. Like beat I him. Know. Yeah. yeah. Would you? Uh, let me ask you this though. Um, um, is it you know Devin Haney? It's it's within his character to to want to jump back in there and to go for a title. So I can see one you know, get, get acquainted with the division fight, but then he's going to, he's going to be wanting to get in there. So, um, I, look, I, I think someone like Rocha makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking just golden boy fighters, maybe Santion. I don't, I don't know who else. I mean, uh, it's, it's not going to be anyone who's going to be able to overwhelm him with their power. We need to see Devin Haney come back and box well. And to allow himself to say, I I'm back. And whether he is or not, you know, at least get get his feet under him in the division. You know, one of the names I thought of was Michael McKinson, who is uh has been connected to Matchroom in the past. Uh skilled guy, so certainly credible. Um, I don't know how many he's won a few fights in a row since that loss to Virgil Ortiz. Uh he he'll be looking for a big fight to come back in. Uh, you know, that to me makes some sense. Michael McKinson to me is like the 147 pound version of Sandor Martin, right? Where he's good, but he's not going to hurt you. And as long as Devin still has his wits about him, has his skill set, has his confidence, that's a fight I would favor him uh, to win. To your point about what that Garcia took fight took out of him, I don't know. I, I lean more towards the optimistic side of that because. Even though Devin took that beating and were there three or four rounds where he was either knocked down or badly hurt, you know, he, he was successful in the other rounds, right? Like he was still, when he was boxing, he was boxing reasonably well. Like whatever you thought the final scores were, th this was not a blowout win right. for Ryan Garcia. Um, so I, I do think that given his age, given how he fought through some of that, uh, that those tough moments, um, that, that to me makes me believe that he's going to be able to to shake this off and get back to being the Devin Haney he used to be. And look, there is a pathway there. Like, he does have a strong connection to Turkey Alashik. Turkey Alashik wants to put Devin Haney fights on in Saudi Arabia. You come back against a McKinson type, maybe an Alexis Rocha type, uh, although you can certainly argue Rocha's kind of dangerous too. Rocha can punch a little bit. So uh, 
you come back against a, a lesser fighter, uh, you're going to be able to lure a champion uh, over to Saudi Arabia. Like Mario Barrios is out there looking for a fight. I don't believe the Pacquiao fight is going to happen. I think you and me are on the same page or on that one. Mount to you know, can't get fights. Like he has the worst luck in the world or he just is, is plagued by inactivity. These are guys that want to fight and want to collect a payday. And, you know, the Saudis offer both. So I can see if Devin Haney comes back, I can see him back on one of those two end-of-the-year cards against a McKinson type and then right into a big fight in the first quarter of 2025. And look, let's say he wins a title. I know we're, we're, we're starting to put carts before horses here, but let's say he wins a title against the Barrios or against the Stanionis. How much bigger does that make a say Ryan it. Garcia rematch? Like, doesn't it make it? It oh, makes yeah. it huge. And look, like, we all know it's coming, right? Like, we all know it's going to happen. Devin wants to run that back. Ryan, when he gets back, is going to be looking for a big payday. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the pay-per-views were huge the first time around because people didn't believe that fight was going to be competitive. You bet your ass they're going to be big the second time around because of all that went into it and all that came out of that first fight. So, if I'm Devin Haney, that is my path. I am going McKinson first. I'm, I'm now locked in on Michael McKinson. I've just, dis I've just dismissed okay. your Alexis Rocha. Uh, McKinson, McKinson before the end of the year, Barrios or Stanionis first quarter of the year, and then summer 2025, a huge showdown. Maybe it's in Los Angeles, maybe it's in New York against Ryan Garcia, which will, um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly if Devin can go three and zero in those fights, we'll get him all the way back. We'll get back everything that he, that he you know, quasi lost in that that Garcia fight. And then the winner fights boots on us. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see about that. I think I think Boots is gonna, still going to have some problems. Look, I, Boots is the same thing. Like Eddie Eddie Hearn knows that to get Boots that championship fight, he's going to have to dramatically overpay either Barrios or Stanionis. So we'll see if he's got the resources to do that domestically, or if he has to tap into some of that that Saudi money uh, to do it over in Riyadh. Look, I, given the crowd in Philly, which was fantastic, like I, I think that's a perfect fight for Philadelphia. Um, but maybe you do have to go uh, overseas to make uh, a fight like that happen. So we'll see if the, the money is going to be there for those guys to fight because they're going to be looking for uh, career best paydays.